surrounding the Golden Gate simply disappear. Phyllis, Phyllis, who makes the warning bells on the cable cars play the gangs all here. Phyllis, Phyllis, who charms the crabs on fishermen's wharf right out of their shells. Who lights the lamps of Chinatown just by walking in view. Dearest Mary, I'm sorry it's been so long since my last letter. It's not that I haven't missed you or that I haven't been thinking of you constantly. It's just that I had more important things to do. I am just loving San Francisco. Last week I went to Chinatown for breakfast. Guess what I had? Bacon and egg roll. <laughs> You must miss my inimitable sense of humor. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, Mary, I'm a working girl, a member of the toiling masses. I've been at it six weeks now. Of course, it was a little rough at the very beginning. I'm so sorry I'm late. And on my first day of work, too. I took the wrong cable car. I promise I'll never be tardy again. Good. <laughs> Zip you are, you'll just have to stay late and clean the blackboards. What blackboards? <laughs> oh, the blackboards. Like the school. You were making a little joke, weren't you? I guess I was, yes. Isn't that marvelous? I've heard about the good-natured ribbing that goes on between fellow workers. I'm surprised it's starting so soon. I feel as if I've just been accepted into the fraternity. <laughs> Thank you. Phyllis, why don't you get set up over there? My desk. <laughs> My very own desk. You know, Julie, this is the first desk I've ever had that didn't have a dirty word carved in it. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> oh, look. Look, look at my desk. <laughs> no, Vanessa must have written that. Who, who's she? The girl you're replacing. She probably wrote it the day I fired her. Why did you fire her? Penmanship. <laughs> That's the first thing she ever wrote I could read. <laughs> <laughs> and it sure is a good word. <laughs> well, why don't you just make yourself at home? Oh, thank you. <laughs> the buck stops here? Oh, I, I know the buck doesn't stop here, but they were all out of if you could keep your head while others around you are losing theirs, then you probably don't understand the situation. <laughs> Phyllis, uh, the first couple of days, I want you just to take it easy, walk around, keep your eyes open, and get used to the way we do things, okay? No. <laughs> Julie, there are watchers and there are doers. I am a doer, and doers can do anything. So, what do you want me to do? Watch. <laughs> okay, there were some letters I was going to Oh, I'll do them, I'll do them. Oh, you can type. Of course. There's nothing to it. I mean, the, they have the letters printed right on the keys. <laughs> I mean, you hit a letter and it goes on the paper. Hey. Look where they put the B. <laughs> hey, typing's fun. Oh, hi, Leo. You remember Phyllis? Oh, yeah, hi, Phyllis. Hi, hi. Where do I need some coffee? I was up all night with some buddies. We were trying to decide who was the better director, Fellini or Bergman. What did you decide? We decided to get bombed. Come on, 
and pull yourself together. You have to reshoot the ice cream picture for Finnegan. This is a boysenberries. Look like raspberries. They were raspberries. I thought they could pass. How you doing, Phyllis? Oh, terrific. I'm on my fifth word. Why don't you go help Leo? No, no, I have to finish this. Phyllis, do it. Wow. <laughs> my first order. <laughs> Julie, I can feel it starting already. Work. The taut, exciting tension of the ever-approaching deadline. The air charged with electricity as two strong-minded women... Now! <laughs> my second order. <laughs> Well, kid, this is it. You nervous? Uh, yes, a little. You should be. You're working with the best. Come here. <laughs> Let me show you something. You see this baby? Camera. <laughs> Camera. You catch on quick. I like that. <laughs> and the dark room. <laughs> it's dark. Horse. <laughs> That's enough for the first day. Uh, you get the ice cream out of the refrigerator there. And I'll set up the... Camera. Camera. Oh. What happy memories ice cream brings to mind. Those carefree, joyful days of youth. Sunny days at the beach. The state fair, birthday parties, the day they ripped out my tonsils. Tonsils, yeah. Mine are gone. I remember my mother told me after the operation I could have all the ice cream I wanted. What she forgot to tell me is I wouldn't want any. It's incredible what some parents tell their children. I remember once when I was a little girl, I asked my mother where babies came from. She told me the most ridiculous, incredible story you have ever heard. Mm -hmm. Turned out later to be true. <laughs> what are you doing? Why aren't you taking the picture? Oh, Julia. If you don't get this picture taken, something really crazy is going to happen. <laughs> what? Unemployment. <laughs> Phyllis, cut it out. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> Phyllis, we just don't have time for this kind of silliness. We're in a hurry, and we got to get this done fast. So do as you're told, and don't ask any questions. Boy, is she strict. Come on, let's get this done. Put the ice cream back in the fridge. Gee, look at this list of ingredients. Artificial coloring, sorbitan, monosterate. There are hardly any real ingredients in this. I think the sorbitan monosterate is real sorbitan monosterate. <laughs> but how dare they call it ice cream. <laughs> ice cream is fresh milk and cream and honey and fresh fruit and nuts all mixed together in a huge wooden bucket. That's ice cream. That's America. Leo, we're helping to persuade people to eat this stuff. If we take this picture, you and I will be contributing to the phoniness, the trickery, the deceit that permeates our society today. You know, son, Phyllis, you are absolutely wrong. Now, can we please take the picture? You mean you haven't taken it yet? Julie, uh, Leo and I were just discussing the moral and ethical implications of taking this picture. I am not at all certain that it would be right for us to do so. Now, look. 
You don't seem to understand the simple fact. You work for me, and you have to do what I tell you. That's what I pay you for. Is that clear, Phyllis? Perfectly clear, Julie. Work stinks. <laughs> Just as I told you. You're right, lying there like a lump. <laughs> tell her about work, Jonathan. She'll listen to you. You work. I'll tell you about work. <laughs> work is terrible. It's demeaning, dehumanizing, demoralizing, and humiliating. <laughs> That's work, all right. <laughs> is that the way you feel about your job? No, dear, I have a good job, but that's the way I'd feel if I had her job. How do I get a job like yours? Nothing to it, really. You go to law school, work hard, apply yourself, and then if your college roommate happens to become governor, you're a judge. Oh. <laughs> Why, I thought you got there on merit. And all you did was sleep with the governor. <laughs> Why do people have to work? It's so unnatural. Animals don't work. And even if they did, who would hire them? <laughs> Phyllis, if you don't want to work right now, that's up to you. But frankly, I think a job at this time would be good for you. I think you need to get out in the world and stand on your own two feet and find out for yourself that whatever obstacles lie ahead, you can handle them. Well, maybe. That's the spirit! <laughs> oh, yes, Jonathan, you're absolutely right. I'm a grown woman, have all my faculties. There's nothing I can't do if I set my mind to it. Work may be tough, but I'll be tougher. That a girl, Phyllis. We'll get out of your way. Yeah, thank you. I better get going. I don't want to be late for work. Hello, Chewy. <laughs> this is Phyllis. I don't feel well. I'm not coming in today. <laughs> what do you think of the 49ers? <laughs> I'd prefer to be alone. Well, I'd prefer to be a millionaire. But I, I settled for a wino. Have a snort. It's locale made from sugarless grapes. Oh, thank you. Why not? Because it's red wine, and I had fish for lunch. You can call a fish burger in the park fish. Wasn't very good, was it? How do you know? I had your leftovers. <laughs> Still taste it. Look at that. Can't be choosers. <laughs> Usually that's used metaphorically, but not this time. No. Troubles. I got troubles. <laughs> You're out of work. No. As a matter of fact, I just started a new job yesterday. Oh, you on your lunch hour? No. On your day off? No. And you're sitting here in the park. That's right. Can I get that job? <laughs> uh, to tell the truth, I... I called my boss this morning and told her I was sick. 
Oh, you're just playing hooky. I suppose I am. My family thinks I'm at work. I left the house at the normal time, but instead of going in, I just wandered around the city doing nothing. You know what it's like to do absolutely nothing for the entire day? <laughs> Why don't you just go back to work? Because I hate my job. I want to quit. Come on now. Where would this country be if everybody went around quitting their jobs? you got to remember that work is the wellspring of civilization. Everybody's got to pitch in. Everybody's got to pull his own weight. Everybody's got to do his share. <laughs> suppose I'd better go back to the office and try it again it won't be easy but I've done difficult things before I mean going to work can't be any more difficult than giving birth can it personally I hope I don't ever have neither one of them experience <laughs> well I have to go back just hope I can find the courage. Millions of Americans use this. <laughs> Do you have a glass? <laughs> no, I guess you don't. here by yourself. I had to come down and put in a good day's work. Phyllis, we're going home in five minutes. Well, I'll put in a good five minutes' work. <coughs> oh, Julie, I'm sorry. Oh, hey, Phyllis, take it easy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Julie. I, I wasn't sick at all. I just didn't want to come in. Why not? Because it's this job, Julie. It's, it's demeaning drudgery. I know. If I weren't afraid, no one would take it. That's how I'd advertise it in the papers. I mean, it's not that work itself is demeaning. On the contrary. I feel that honest labor has an inherent dignity. Even the lowliest garbage man is, has as much dignity as the President of the United States. Often more. <laughs> I guess what's really bothering me is I, I don't know where I stand here. I mean, what am I? What, what's my position? You're an assistant. I don't like it. <laughs> Phyllis, I don't Julie, understand. no, this Come. is important. I have to know the chain of command. Now, you're the boss, right? Right. Okay, what if you got sick? Who would be in charge? Leo. Okay, what if Leo got sick? We'd close down. <laughs> I, Julie, I, I realize that I have to be a responsible employee and submit to your authority, and that if I don't, you have the right to fire me. But what right do I have? You have the right to quit. Somehow, that's not enough. Phyllis, what do you want? A labor management contract? Can I have one? <laughs> I guess so. Why not? Can I have one now? Oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> this uh, will confirm and constitute an agreement between Phyllis Lindstrom, employee, and Julie Erskine, employer. Will you read that back to me? <laughs> Phyllis, I don't know what you can put in this contract. You know what your working hours are, you know your salary, you know how much time you get off a of vacation, you know your health plan, your pension. What else is there? I want you to be nice to me. <laughs> okay. 
I, Julie Erskine, promise to be nice to Phyllis Linsky. And not yell at her. <laughs> and not yell at her. Because she's very new to this whole thing. Because she's very new to this whole thing. Thing. And is trying her very best. And is trying her very best. Okay? That's perfect. Now I can go to work. Oh, good. Type it up. <laughs> swimmingly now. Of course, as much as I adore California, I am terribly homesick for Minneapolis. Please, Mary, the next time it snows, do me a favor. Rush outside and mail me a cup of slush. <laughs> uh, well, that's about all the news for now. Remember me to all my friends there who love and miss me. <laughs> Please write. Or better yet, call as soon as possible. I can't tell you how often I think of you and wish you were here to talk to. I've never appreciated having a best friend like you more than now. I so long to hear from you. Most fondly yours, Phyllis. Hello, Phyllis. It's Mary. Listen, I just got your letter, and I... Well, no, if you're busy, you're busy. <laughs> no, sure, I under... Yeah, okay, nice talking to you, too. Bye. You're watching ALN. Here's what's coming next.